have enough time to make it to all the events, do you? No. But you can always go here. But why miss it twice? Get Surf City Highlights and stay engaged with your community. Surf City Highlights. Very exciting day for Huntington. You know, actually, today I've, I've uh, pinned 22 badges today. So 13 new recruits and a bunch of captains and engineers. So this is just like an incredible time for us. I'm, I'm so stoked for everybody today. Yeah, I think, I think uh, you know, we've had a few different promotions over the course of the year, but we haven't been able to get people together because of COVID. So now it's like with the, the, everything changing and being able to have something outside, it's, it's just exciting to, to go back to a little bit of normalcy here. You know, just a little bit. So it'd be good. As an elected official, our most important responsibility is to ensure that our city has the very best police, fire, and marine safety services. None of this would be possible without the highly trained and dedicated people that we are honoring this afternoon. I further promise to hold sacred these objectives and dedicate myself to the fire service as my chosen profession. So help you God. It was all on display at the Waterfront Beach Resort at Hilton Hotel. 60 years of commitment, 60 years of love toward a community. It was all there for its members throughout the years, from iconic servants to the newest inductees ready to serve. The day was not an ordinary Tuesday regular meeting for the Kiwanis Club of Huntington Beach. Founded on the ideals to give back to the community and help children. We've continued so many successful projects over the years. Shop for Hope, Clothe the Children, Family Fun Day, the Fishing Derby, and our Angels program, which just gave out $500 in gift cards to a family that lost their house in a fire. Also, we do a lot of scholarships as well. 60 years later, at this 60 year celebration, I'm honored and deeply proud to be your president. This club has had the most fascinating history. I'd like to thank Mr. Mike Haywood for bringing that history to light in our 60th year anniversary book. Thank you, Mike, so much. Members and membership drives the success of Kiwanis. Many past and present were honored and remembered like Pete Jantz, with a perfect 65-year attendance record. And in his honor, the first ever Pete Jantz Award. Daniela is going to be receiving our Pete Jantz Academic Excellence Award. Also, legendary members Bill Reidenauer and Bill Ellis. Uh, just celebrating my 50th year in Columbus, and what it has done for me has made me feel as though I'm a total part of the community, and it 
people that I've met and been with for 50 years in Kiwanis has helped me to be who I am today. It's about man serving this community with the children, the aged population of our community, making sure we get out there and do good quality work in our community. And receiving the William A. Dunlap Fellowship, Ed Lair. It's a good day when the Kiwanis District Governor stops in. This is a very special club. First of all, it has survived for many years. It was the 60th anniversary celebration. It's also a club that, club that has grown continuously over the decades. They've done a great job with succession planning, and they're doing a great job with leadership development. HB City Manager Oliver Chi, special guest speaker, highlighted a parallel track for serving in that outlining how the city of Huntington Beach responded in service to its residents and businesses during the pandemic and introducing yet another first for Huntington Beach. And how cool is it that in an era where doing new things is hard, here in Huntington Beach, we're gonna be the first city in Orange County to roll out a mobile crisis response program that's gonna help not just address some of the homeless issues that we have, but really address the mental health issues that really have been impacting our community, especially during COVID. There were community leaders, businessmen and women, political leaders, and they all came here to celebrate one thing, 60 years of history for the Kiwanis of Huntington Beach. And they came here to do it because the Kiwanis Club of Huntington Beach earned it. 60 years of public service, over a half a million dollars to school scholarships. Uh, the list goes on. Right? Uh, a friend of mine has said one thing about Kiwanis ever since I met him. It's a family. Truly, Kiwanis of Huntington Beach is a family. Here's to a great family. Here's to another 60 serving Huntington Beach. We'll see you at the 70th. For Surf City Highlights, this is Matt Liffering. to the world that Huntington Beach is a beautiful and loving community that embraces freedom. The freedom to be whoever you want to be without shame, without discrimination, and without fear. I could not be more proud of my fellow council members who voted unanimously to fly the pride flag. And yes, I round of applause. We know that Orange County, uh, a person who perceives sexual identity, is the third uh, leading cause of hate crimes nationwide. 40% of homeless youth on our streets uh, are on our streets because of their identity. The raising of the pride flag today is not only a symbol of hope, as Harvey and as our mayor so eloquently stated, but it will save lives. To all our community partners, uh, like the Lavender Democrats, the Orange County LGBTQ Center, the Orange County Pride, and others uh, that are on the ground every day doing the work provide social services, visibility, safe spaces into the community, I thank you. Now as a gay senior, I believe it is just as important to stand for the LGBT community always. And as a director of a senior center, it is important to look at the issues facing our LGBTQ elders in areas where they are discriminated against and um, housing communities or 55 plus communities or having to go back into the closet, we can never go back into that closet. We have come way too far. It is in that spirit that the raising of a pride flag takes on even more importance. And I want to especially thank Dan Kalmick and Mayor Kim Carr, Councilman Dan Kalmick and Mayor Kim Carr, for setting the agenda and the narrative that brought us to this day. This is a really important moment in history for Huntington Beach, a moment when we see the City Council voting unanimously to honor Harvey Milk and Gay Pride Month. This moment, however, is not, is not 
It isn't just this moment. This moment came up because of many, many people working really hard and, and pushing the button with so many people. It is incredibly vital for people in the LGBT plus, Q plus community to know that they are represented and supported here at City Hall and beyond. This is important progress towards a truly inclusive and accepting community, and I am beyond honored to be a part of it. Fun living it every day. Once you have it, don't you lose, you gotta find a way. Fun doing it every day. Set your intention. Put your vision to reality. Wake up with a smile and be who you wanna be. Follow your dreams. And don't let anyone tell you differently. Shall make the sun flow like the sea. And be who you wanna be. You're gonna be, you're gonna be, you're gonna be. Be who you wanna be, you're gonna be, you're gonna be, who you gonna be. Just be who you wanna be, you're gonna be, you're gonna be, you're gonna be. Be who you wanna be. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do Youth in Government Day the way we usually do. Usually students from all four Huntington Beach high schools come to City Hall for a day. They're assigned to a department to take a tour, and then we all gather together for a mock city council meeting. Afterwards, there's a luncheon with a guest speaker. But that just wasn't possible this year. And so the youth board, after much thinking and planning and creating, they decided to do a virtual Youth in Government Day. It's a lot of fun for me to guide the students who act as city council members on Youth and Government Day through that process. But those students are usually strangers to me, and this year was a lot more fun to help the youth board members who I knew fairly well through their virtual tours of different departments. Our youth board members are so impressive and I think the staff really enjoyed getting to meet some of them one-on-one -on -one and seeing them learn about their department. I did hear feedback from several department members that they missed having the group tours and meeting several students from around our city. One of my favorite tours to do virtually from behind the scenes was when Caitlin Sheets was interviewing Public Works Department members. I didn't know beforehand that she had an interest in biomedical engineering or engineering in general. To watch her get so excited about Public Works and ask about all the different workings of the department and even behind the scenes continue to ask questions was one of the most fun things of filming behind the scenes. So we are here in SCADA. So go ahead, what does SCADA mean? Tell me more about it. SCADA stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition and it's basically the brainchild of how we run our system. So what is it like to, you know, not just be on TV being broadcast live. What does the mayor do to, on a day-to-day -day basis? What is it like to truly be the mayor? It's truly an honor, it really is. And there are days when sometimes I have to pinch myself and can't believe that I get the opportunity to do this. The lesson we've all learned in the last year and a half is adaption is important. And a year ago, we weren't able to do Youth in Government Day at all. It was planned for March 17th and school got canceled on March 13th. So to be able to use the year to plan for an alternative and implement it, doing a virtual event, it was a great experience for the youth board. Although one they're hoping not to have to repeat next year. Patrol officers respond to over 100,000 calls for service each year and write thousands of reports. There are units comprised of detectives, scientific lab, records, community relations, traffic, jail, and many others. Mm -hmm.